as I listened to WFAN all day, it was lining up for me to be the one to speak on the passing of Kobe Bryant. It was just mentioned around 6 o'clock by Carton and Roberts that today is the two-year passing of Kobe Bean Bryant. This morning I got up, and uh, for the first time I read the first couple pages of Mamba Mentality, Kobe Bryant's book. My wife got it for Christmas, and uh, I just waited. I, I wanted to start it today and, and read it you know, through the next couple weeks or however long it takes, but uh, I'm a Kobe fan. And I know a lot of you know me as a Nets fan. Well, there was a point in time where I'm glad it didn't go this way. I could have been a Yankees, Cowboys, Lakers fan. And uh, <laughs> when Jordan left, I was already a Kobe fan, and Kobe just was emerging as the guy. And the first time I ever went to Madison Square Garden, the first Knicks game I ever saw, my older brother Sean took me to go see Kobe. He knew I was a Kobe fan. I wasn't a Laker fan yet, but I was transitioning from the 90s into the 2000s. And in the year 2000, he took me to go see Kobe Bryant, who was my favorite player at Madison Square Garden. Now, I don't remember the game too much. I don't remember that much about the experience besides taking the train up from Long Branch in Monmouth County to Penn Station and then my brother meeting me and then, you know, taking the subway around. And I just remember being afraid of New York City Jersey kid, 12 years old, coming up to the city by himself. And it was crowded and easy to get lost. It was crazy people, homeless people. The most I remember is uh, this crazy homeless guy banging a newspaper on the sign that tells you whether you're going uptown or downtown on the subway. And I was praying that he didn't get on the train car that I was on. And, of course, he did. And, of course, he sat right next to me. And my brother kind of just watched me laughing as I was terrified, hoping this guy didn't really, you know, do anything to me. He didn't. But that was New York back in the year 2000. And I was so excited after seeing that game, I had a decision to make. And I didn't actually decide to get any Lakers gear or become a Lakers fan. But what I did was really just ride with Kobe more. And, uh, you know, I became a Nets fan because not long after that, the Nets got better. Jason Kidd came here and then you know, the Nets went to back-to-back -back finals in 2003 and 2004, and then I was at a crossroads, you know. The, the Nets played the Lakers in the finals, and I was torn. I wanted the Nets to win, but I knew they weren't going to beat Kobe and Shaq, and I knew Kobe was going to ball and get another ring, and it was just going to be tough. But I thought, you know, maybe in a couple years the Nets would get back, and that never happened. But I watched Kobe go on to win multiple championships and we started to learn more about the Mamba mentality and as he got older in his career he changed his number from eight to 24 I used to wear number eight playing basketball I wore number eight playing football eight was my number growing up and partly because of Kobe he was cool man uh inspiring and just the guy and you know uh, him and my brother were the same age um, my brother Sean would have been 44 this year, and so would have Kobe Bryant. So when this day comes, uh, I have a heavy heart. I think about a lot. And two years ago, I know exactly where I was when I heard this news. My, my wife came out and told me that she read that Kobe had died in a helicopter crash, and I was like, don't play like that. Don't, don't say things like that unless you're 100% sure. Where did you hear this from? Uh, you know, with the Internet, people just say things and put things out there. Don't don't hit me with that. And then when I started looking around and researching, I was paralyzed. I couldn't move. I couldn't believe it. I, I knew 2020 was going to suck as soon as we lost Kobe. And, uh, yeah, I cried. It hit me a different way, especially because the 26th is four days between my brother's birthday. I lost my brother in 2015. And then to lose Kobe in 2020, like days before, it rocked me. Um, <clears throat> I'm getting choked up now. But what I wanted to say tonight was Kobe inspired a generation. And uh, I'm glad that I get to be here at WFAN to talk about Kobe and pay tribute to my brother 
two people that influenced my life and helped make me who I am, you know, um, I'm sure I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the influence of them two. And, uh, you know, seeing Lakers fans last night in Barclays Center, you know, I, I didn't mind it. I talked to a couple of them, and they were like, you know, this is for Kobe. This is for Kobe. You see my Kobe jersey? And I was like, yeah, man, it's all right. You know, basketball fans, you know, my age, my generation, we all love Kobe. And uh, I might be the youngest host, so that's my era. I should be the one speaking on him. And uh, I feel like every year this is going to be hard for me moving forward. But... I wanted to get on air tonight and share my story, share some emotion, and just be real and transparent. You know, Kobe's influence and his way of just being relentless and working and his drive, it it inspired me throughout my whole life. And my brother's influence helped mold me and craft me. He made me competitive. He made me tough. My brother is 10 years older than me, and uh, I'm just thankful for both of them. So trying not to cry, but, you know, it's tough. And uh, I wanted to dedicate tonight and tomorrow and Friday to both Kobe Bryant and my brother, Sean McPherson. This is Keith McPherson on the fan. I'm going to take a break, get it together, and then when we come back, we'll take a couple calls at 7 o'clock. Eddie Gonzalez will join me, and uh, we'll talk about his podcast with Kevin Durant. The ETC's new podcast came out today. It was a good good pod, and uh, it's a basketball night. The Knicks are on tonight against the Heat. The Nets face the Nuggets, and uh, I'll be fine. I'll get it together. Call up. Uh, I see your calls coming in. We'll take them when we come after. Uh, come back from the break. 877-337-6666. This is Keith McPherson on the fan.